الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نضل أو نضل أو نزل أو نزل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم آمين all praise is due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise Him, we seek His forgiveness, we thank Him, we seek His tawfiq and His backing, His awn. Um, because wallahi, without the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal, we couldn't see what's good as good and what's evil as evil. And even if we knew it, we wouldn't do the good and avoid the evil without the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is very important. You see me repeat this over and over again, and I'm going to keep doing that because that reality is so important. We, as a servant of Allah Azza wa Jal, we are not self sufficient, we are not powerful enough. Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Ghani, He is the self sufficient. And to do any good and to do, avoid any evil, we need the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you ever do something good, then know for a fact that it was Allah who gave you the tawfiq to do it. And if you avoid any mistake or any sin or anything evil, then know that Allah Azza wa Jal gave you the tawfiq to do that. Don't think that you are smart enough or powerful enough. Wallahi, we disavow of our own powers and of our own intelligence and we attach to the power and uh, backing of Allah Azza wa Jal and His tawfiq. And like we always say, الموفق من وفقه الله. الموفق من وفقه الله. The muwaffaq, the person who is muwaffaq, is the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal gave the tawfiq. So <coughs> we ask Allah Azza wa Jal and we pray Him, pray to Him, and we make tawassul to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of our deeds and all of our sayings sincere and make us among those who do for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and say for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And avoid the prohibitions for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala make us all among those who say what is haq and do what is haq based on the evidence, based on the proof, and based on the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal and His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With that said, we don't have too much time. The time frame is so short, so much shorter. So quickly we skim over what we talked about last Saturday so that we can continue the discussion. So we started the discussion on a taha, purity. And we defined what purity is and we said it is of two types. Barakallah The first one. The first type is spiritual. The spiritual purity, which is the purity of the heart from the shirk, from the kufr from the sins, and that is one of the most important aspect of purity. The second one is the physical, which is the discussion of, of, of the fiqh that we're going through, right? The spiritual is what we talked about for months and months in while talking about the tawheed, right? So, spirit, uh, so physical purity, again we said it is of two types. What are the, the two types? Hint, it's right there on the wall. We said the first one is رفع الحدث, removal of الحدث. The second one is 
ايوه ازاله الخبث which is removal of الخبث and we said that رفع الحدث is basically removal of the state يعني that occurs or that the body can be described right after doing any of the acts that makes that body impure with respect to doing certain types of ibadat for example you know doing using the restroom right relieving oneself that act is called hadath when you do that it makes the body impure to pray to touch the, the quran etc etc certain types of ibadat that you cannot do until unless you are in a state of purity that's why we say al hadath is a state of the body it affects the whole body right it makes the body in a state that it cannot do or perform certain types of worships and we said it is of two types as well there is al hadath al asghar the minor hadath which is for example you know using the restroom passing gas that's minor hadath there is the major hadath which is anybody can give us an example which which having a dream a wet dream having a wet dream you wake up in the morning and you're wet that required that is hadath akbar we call it al janaba yani that person is junun that is a major hadath it requires a major purity we're going to see and we're going to talk about it a little bit in a, in a, in a little bit. so there is the minor hadath and it requires minor uh, purification which is using the water on the limbs that are part of the wudu in other words performing wudu with niyyah with like we said very important ya akhwan I repeat and that's the why why I repeat because it is very important. Two people came at the end of the day. Back they came back home. One of them didn't think that he's doing a wudu, right? He washed and did all the types of washing that is part of the wudu, but he did this only as part of cleaning oneself, which is just a tradition. At the end, you know, he got he came, you know, tired and you know, dusty. So he cleaned up by making this type of uh cleaning and washing another person came home and did exactly the same acts but had an intention he had in mind that he was performing wudu for the next prayer is the first one an accepted wudu no it's not because it, it doesn't have an intention and the wudu is using the water on the limbs that are part of the wudu with an intention biniya and we said the niya is ya akhwan so important by the way we're gonna see, you're gonna see us keep talking about it it's such an important topic of al fiqh and of all the deeds right all the deeds need to be to have a niyyah that you are aware of what you're doing right and sincere to allah azza wa jal without a niyyah the niyyah is what distinguish between a tradition and a ibadah aada and ibadah we have aada tradition ibadah which is an act of worship to allah azza wa jal that you get rewarded for tradition you don't get rewarded for while ibadah you get rewarded for al hadath al akbar which is the major hadath is like we said an example you wake up in the morning with you have a wet dream right that requires what to purify from you you need a major purification which is a whole ghusl you need to wash the whole uh, body in a certain way again we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about the wudu in gory details we're going to talk about al ghusl what is required what is sunnah the different dua for each one of them what is mustahab etc but we're just you know going real quick about the different types of uh, purification again with intention let me give you an example two people jumped in the sea one with an intention with an intention to perform a ghusl because he had the wet dream another person you know just in the summer in the day of summer he just wanted to cool down the second person say well you know i remember that i actually required a ghusl well i jumped in the sea so that is a ghusl you say no 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 that's not a ghusl it's not accepted ghusl you didn't have an intention you did, weren't you didn't mean to actually make a ghusl by jumping in the sea you were just cooling down in the in the day of summer the first one yes he had an intention he wanted to perform a ghusl out of that 
Third case is if water is not present or you cannot use it for an excuse, sickness, I think makes the sickness worse, then what do you do? You resort to what's called the tayammum, which is a specific way of purifying, whether for, from the minor hadath or the major hadath. Or the major hadath. If you, if you require a ghusl and there is no water, or you're sick, the water, you cannot use the water. What do you do? Tayammum, which is a specific way of using soil, clean soil, in a particular fashion to achieve purity. Moving forward, <clears throat> the other type of, purif of, of uh, purification we said is removal of al-khabath. Al-khabath, which has to do, which is an impure substance that can attach to the body or that can attach to the garment or attach to the place of the worship. Remember, al-hadath only is a state of the body. So it is only related to the body. Al-hadath is not related to the garments is not related to the place, it is a state of the body. Al-Khabath is, or Al-Najasa, it, it, it has to do with the body, it, can, it, it has to do with the garments, it has to do with the place. So the body needs to be clean, the garments need to be clean, and the place need to be clean, right? But it's not a state of the body. In other words, let's say for example, somebody already did wudu. But an impure substance came on his, for example, hand. Does he need to repeat the wudu? No, he's already pure. But he just needs to watch that, to wash that impurity. So it's not a state, but rather substance, like I said, that relates to the body or the garments or the, or the place. And there are three categories. Again, we're going to talk later on. But just to give you an idea, there are impure substances that, can, that need to be washed, ghasl, or that can be moistened or sprinkled or that can be wiped, right? Moving forward, we said, okay, what do we need or what can be used to achieve that purity? We said only water, pure water. And what is pure water? It is the water that is, that it is in its original shape that it was created in, right? Yani all, it retains all its original characteristics like Allah Azza wa Jal created the water. And we said that can be come from falling from the sky, or it can be running on the earth. Yani, rain water, uh, uh, the water that melts from the snow or the hail, all of that is pure water that can be used for purification. River water, spring water, uh, well water, right? All of that can be sea and ocean, all of that can be used. And we gave all the evidences, um, obviously we can't repeat all of them, People can watch, can uh, listen to the record of, the, of last Saturday, but we gave evidence for every single one of them. But we said uh, purification cannot be achieved by any other liquid, only water, right? So it cannot be achieved, for example, by vinegar. Cannot be, can, can you make wudu with vinegar? You cannot make wudu with vinegar. How about uh, orange juice? How about chai? Cannot, right? Because it is not water. We said only water that retains its original shape and form and its characteristics can be used to achieve uh, purity. Um, I think, is this where we, I think this is where we actually arrived uh, or we covered last Saturday. And uh, subhanAllah, I guess, um, I thought I didn't have more slides, which I did. I'm like, I, I know I created more slides. What happens, you see, technology sometimes when it gets in the way, what happened is I put all these files and slides on the cloud. I use Google Drive, right? And I create the slides on my computer, on my laptop. And it should sync, right? And I should see the same slides on my laptop. It didn't sync the last version. So, and <laughs> it only synced, you know, the previous copy, which didn't have the extra few slides, subhanAllah. So, learn lesson. Always check if you have the latest copy on, on, the, on the cloud, if, if everything synced up. So, alhamdulillah, I made sure that this, <coughs> Uh, happens today. That. We said uh, a lot of people, by the way, and which, is, which I find interesting, a lot of people don't know that the water, the sea and ocean water can be used for purification. You say, well, it's salty water. How can it be used? It can be used because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, but I just wanted to repeat this because I see a lot of new faces. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked in this hadith related by Imam al-Tirmidhi and Abi Dawood and al nasai and Ibn Majah. He was asked about the water of the sea, 
right? Because people, you know, especially for example, the you know fishers, they go in the sea and they only take a limited quantity of water with them. If they use it for wudu, where do they drink from? <laughs> right? They'll run, they'll run out of water pretty soon. So he was asked, alayhi salatu wassalam, how do we do? He said, al-bahru huwa tahuru ma'uhu al-hillu maytatuhu. Yani, the ocean, its water is pure and its dead creatures are halal, are permissible to eat. So this is the clear evidence from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we said we cannot use any, any other liquid other than water. Uh, and if not, then we use a tayammu. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَا فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا And do not, if, if you do not find water, then seek clean earth. The ulama have said that since Allah Azza wa Jal transitioned immediately from water to the earth, right? That clearly says that there is nothing other than water in terms of liquid that can be used for purification. Otherwise, it should have been pre pre uh, transitioned to that first and then to water, right? So let's say, for example, if theoretically speaking, right? If vinegar was allowed or if, for example, juice was allowed, then in the absence of water, we should use juice and if not, then tayammum. But since the transition was directly to the soil to, to do tayammum, that tells us that only clean water can be used uh, to do the tahar. Uh, the next topic is what if water is mixed with uh, you know other things, right? Uh, that are impure, with substances, right? Impurity gets into the water. What is the ruling now on this water? Is this water pure water that can be used for? Uh, purification, whether from al hadath or, or uh, 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 you know, to, to clean the najasa or, or the impurity substances. We say if mixing with impure substances leads the, to change the one of the characteristics of the water, namely the smell, the taste, or the color of the water, then uh, by consensus it is impure and cannot be used for purification. Right? We take this further, right? If none of the three characteristics are changed, you cannot see the, the, the water color changed or the smell or the taste, right? Then we say if the quantity of water is too little, yani under two jars, then we say it is impure. But if it is two jars or more, and the jar is uh, one jar is one sixty point five. Oh, sorry. One jar is one sixty point five liters. So times two, that's what three twenty one, around three hundred and twenty one liters of water. If the quantity of water is that much or more, right? then we say it is pure and, and, and it can be used as a means of purification. The dalil, the evidence, is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith sahih. Um, <clears throat> Inna al-ma'a tahurun la yulajisuhu shay. Water is pure and nothing can make it impure. And this is related by Imam Abi Dawood and Ahmad and Al-Nasai and Al-Tirmidhi and created as Sahih by Imam Al-Albani. So he alayhi salatu wassalam said, Inna al-ma'a tahurun la yunajjisuhu shay. Yani water is pure and nothing can make it impure. Then in another hadith, he quantified that. So this is a general hadith, right? He said water cannot be, cannot become impure. Then in another hadith, related by Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma, he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا بَلَغَ الْمَاءُ قُلَّتَيْنِ لَمْ يَحْمِلِ الْخَبَثِ يعني If there is enough water to fill two pots, two qulla, and the qulla we said the jar is 160.5, then it carries no impurity. So to summarize, if impure substances come into the water, if one of the three characteristic changes, then it's impure. Yani the color change, the smell change, the taste change, then we say it is impure. If none of them changed, right, 
if the quantity of water is two jars or more, then we say it is pure. It is pure. If you don't see any change in the smell, in the color, air in the taste, and it is two jars or more, then nothing can make it impure. Like Rasulullah said. If it is less than two jars, then we say it is impure. Even if you don't see any change in uh, any, any of the characteristics. Understood, Yaf1? Fine. So these are the two cases. Can anybody repeat the real quick for us? The reason I want to do that because it gets complicated. I want to make sure that everything, everybody is getting it. Who can repeat this real quick for us? So, <clears throat> Abdullah? Let's take first. If one of the characteristics changed. Okay, so if one of the characteristics of the water changes, which is taste, smell, or color, uh -huh. then it is impure. impure. That's the first case. First Second case, if none of them changed. If none of them change, and the water is less than two jars, then we say it's impure, whether it changes or not. No. And if the quantity is, of course, more than two jars, and none of that changes, then, then it is pure. Alhamdulillah. And this is from the taysir and easiness that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us in this in this deed. And this is from the bounty of Allah Azza wa Jal. But now, what if it is mixed with pure substances? We said uh, impure substances. How about now pure substances? For example, you say, okay, how can that be, for example? You know, let's say, for example, you know, tree leaves get into the water. You have a pond or you have a you know, mass of water, right? And then some tree leaves get into it. Or at home, for example, you know, especially back home, you know, sometimes, you know, water supply isn't always reliable. You know, I know, I, for example, I come from Lebanon. I know back home, you know, there's, you know, civil war and all of that, you know, especially in the high rises when you are, when you live on, on the 10th floor or whatever, right? Water cannot go there unless there is electricity. After, and I, I, I give you this example because it is a real life situation, right? No. So it is, and I'm pretty sure in other countries where electricity isn't, you know, reliable or guaranteed, right? So you have to watch out for the water usage. You have to watch for the, you wait for the electricity to get. And a lot of people, what, do, what they do is they fill the tub in the bathroom, right? They fill the tub because that can be used when there is no water, right? But what if a little bit of soap, of soap get into that water? Is this now impure and just wasted because it cannot be used for to do purity? That's an important question, by the way. You know, it happens. You know, for example, your son comes and throws in the water a little bit of soap. What, do you throw it away, a full tub full of water? That's, a, that's an important question. So what happens if the water is mixed with pure, not impure, pure substances, right? We say that if water is mixed with pure substances, like we said, for example, tree leaves, you know, a little bit of soap. Uh, in some countries, you know, there is what's called lotus leaves, sedum. You know, it's a tree, they take its leaves, you know, sometimes they grind it and they're, they, it's used for multiple uses. Sometimes it gets mixed with, with the water. So what happens? We say that it, it is pure and it can be used for purification of al-hadath and al-khabath. And, uh, as long as it is still called water. Yani, if you mix soap in it, right? But it is not an overwhelming amount of soap. It's not like become literally soap. You can still say water it is. You know, it might have, you know, some bubbles on the top, but it is still clearly called water. Then we say it is definitely pure and can be used for purification, right? And, um, you know, this is the um, uh, stronger opinion of the ulama. As a matter of fact, all the major uh, scholars Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam uh, Ahmed, and Imam Shafi'i, they all agree that this is actually a pure water um, and it can be used for purification. Uh, the reason is, they say, is Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah An-Nisa, 
وإن كنتم مرضى أو على سفر أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائط أو لامستم النساء فلم تجدوا ماء فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم And if you are ill or on a journey or one of you comes from the place of relieving himself or you have con contacted women and find no water, then see clean earth and wipe over your faces and your hands with it. And notice that Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءَ And ma'a is in the Arabic language is called nakira. Yani it is not a specific water, but water in general. He didn't say, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا الْمَاءَ He said, وَلَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءَ Any water. Yani as if he said, فَلَمْ تَجِدُوا أَيَّ مَاءَ Any water. And this is in the context of negation. It means that any water. Anything that can be called water is considered or can be used for purification. The reason I stress a little bit on this, ya akhwan, is you find a lot of people who are very extremely picky about this topic even beyond what the Sharia tells us. And they think that this is, you know, religiousness, and this is, you know, closeness to Allah Azza wa Jal being, you know, better in practicing the religion. And I say that's not the case, as long as the Sharia clear, clearly tells you that this is a water that can be used. Yani being stricter than what Allah Azza wa Jal and Rasulullah is telling us is not religiousness, on the contrary, right? Sticking to what Allah Azza wa Jal tells us and what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us is exactly the piety that, we, that is required from us. So we say that as long as it is not overwhelming and it is still called, can be called water, people call it water, then it can be used as a means of purification from both types of impurity, whether al-hadath or al-khabath. Also, another example, even clearer example, as a matter of fact. In this hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is agreed upon its authenticity. He alayhi salatu wa salam, when one of his daughters, radiyallahu anha wa ardaha, passed away during his time. And he asked a couple of women to prepare her for burial, right? So, you know that the body of the Muslim needs to be washed. So he alayhi salatu was salam told the woman, he said, اغسلنها ثلاثا أو خمسا أو أكثر من ذلك إن رأيتنا بماء وسدر وجعلنا في الآخرة كافورا أو شيئا من كافور. أم عطية رضي الله عنها, she said that one of the daughters of the Prophet died and he came out and said, wash her three or five times or more if you think it necessary with water and cider, which is the lotus tree that I said. Yeah, and he mix a little bit of cider in the water and make ghusl. Now that's one of the types of ghusl, right? That we, that the Muslim, that we do for the, for, you know, one of the cases that you require in ghusl is death. Right. Rasulullah is telling us, is telling them, you know, mix a little bit of lotus water, uh, of lotus tree with it, cider, and put a uh, camper or some camphor in the last in the last time. So this is a clear evidence that even if some pure substance get mixed with the water and it doesn't dramatically change its characteristics and it still can be called water, then it can be used for purification uh, or as a means of purification. Now, how about vinegar? Can vinegar be used? Can vinegar be used? No. No, because it's not water. Nobody calls it water. Anybody calls it water anymore? It's not. A, it's it changed dramatically. How about tea? Put some tea. No. No. Obviously, because nobody calls the tea water, right? I mean, it's it's pure. Don't don't get me wrong. It is pure in itself, but it cannot purify. And hence, you know, I wanted to bring this notion of actually what is pure and can purify other and what is pure in itself but cannot purify others. We call it Tahir Mutahir and Tahir Ghair Mutahir. So we have three cases. We have Ghair Tahir, impure. We have Tahir Mutahir, yani pure in itself and can be used to purify. And Tahir Ghair Mutahir, yani pure but cannot purify others or it cannot be used as a means of purification. 
Water, pure water, obviously is tahir and tahir. Water that was mixed with impurity, visibly impurity, it is ghair tahir, impure. Shay, tea, we say it is tahir, ghair mutahir. It cannot be used for purification, right? You know, like other you know types, vinegar, etc., etc. Is that understood, ya akhwan? Any questions? So if water is mixed with pure, uh, pure substances, but if it changes the color and taste, is, can it still be used? Or? As long as if it changes a little bit. Right? It might change, you know, obviously if you if you mix even a little bit of soap in some water, it will probably cause some change in the color of the water. But if it is not overwhelming and you can still call it water, then yes, it is pure and can as and it can be used as a means of purification. Right. Barakallah. The next uh, topic is how about remains of the water that was used as a means of purification. A lot of us, you know, we make wudu, right? Now these days, obviously, we use, we make the wudu either in the sink or, you know, here in the place of wudu in the masajid, and it gets drained away, right? It gets wasted, which is, by the way, a concern. And, you know, sad enough, we're gonna be talking about the wudu. I don't wanna, you know, uh, get in, in front of my, uh, myself too, too much. But I just, you know, when I came in the masjid and I saw a certain brothers making wudu, and wallahi, I felt so sad seeing the amount of water that was being drained away. I mean, one of the brothers, he, he had the faucet turned all the way. It was basically, you know, draining so much water just to make wudu. That's a lot of water. That's israf. That's waste. And a Muslim is always required not to be wasteful. That's a ni'mah from Allah Azza wa Jal. Some people die out of you know, uh, drought, and they, they cannot find water. So it is important to, and you know, back in the days, you know, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and you know, especially in, you know, desert areas and where water is very limited, it's a very precious uh, resource, right? You can't just waste it, right? Uh, they used to actually reuse that water. This remain of the water that you used for purification, either from the hadith, for example, while performing wudu, hadath al asghar or even as part of making ghusl from al hadath al-akbar. This water that remains from uh, that, that purification process. Is it pure, can be reused, or is it impure, cannot be reused? That's a very important question. We say that whether, whether the remains of the water, right, that detaches from the body, you know, when you're making wudu, right, there is water that is draining from your, from your body. We say that this is tahir, this is pure, and can be used for purification. Why? In purification for both, for both types, the hadath and the najas. Removal of the hadath and removal of the najas. We say as long as none of the three characteristics have changed. Yeah, the smell and the taste and the color did not change, right? As long as that is the case, then it can be, it is still pure and can be used for purification. What is the dalil? The dalil actually is actually pretty interesting. Here's the dalil. The dalil is what the Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala related. That the companions used to literally fight for the remains of the wudu of the Prophet They literally, they almost fought for it. And we remember for those who were with us, we talked about this. Remember when we talked about a tabarruk, seeking the blessings? And we talked about a tabarruk with the Prophet in the body of the Prophet and anything that comes off of it, be it water of his wudu, remains of the water of his wudu, be it sweat, be it a hair, be it anything. Anything that comes off of the body and in the body of the Prophet it is permissible to seek tabarruk in it. And we give this very example. And here we repeat it. It is actually a crystal clear proof 
He alayhi salatu was salam. The, the hadith goes as, the, as this. And the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha tawadda'a kadu yaqtatilun. Kadu yaqtatilun ala wudu'ihi. Yani whenever the Prophet performed evolution, his companions radiyallahu anhum wa ardahum were nearly fighting for the remains of the water. Crystal clear evidence. So we repeat, as long as none of the three characteristics of the water, smell, uh, colors, uh, or taste change, then the water that uh, is used for purification can be used uh, for, it can be reused for purification. Another example, or another proof as a matter of fact, we say also, uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah, one of the companions radiallahu anhum arda, he felt sick. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu arda, they went to make iyadat al to check on him, right? When they went over there, he fainted. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed wudu and he sprinkled the remains of his wa of the wudu of the water of his wudu alayhi salatu wa sallam on Jabir ibn Abdullah. So he woke up and he got better. And this is, this is actually recorded in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim from Hadith Jabir ibn Abdullah himself, radiyallahu anhu wa arda. He said uh, he, was, uh, he was sick and the messenger of Allah and Abu Bakr came for inquiring after my health. You know, he's he's, re he's re uh, reporting the Hadith. So he, they came after my, uh, to inquire after my health. I fainted. He performed, يعني, he alayhi salatu was salam, performed evolution and then sprinkled over me the water of his evolution. So uh, I felt a relief. He woke up and he felt relief. If that water was impure, would Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa do that? No way. Right? So this is another evidence that it is a pure, uh, a pure water that can be used for purification. Yani tahir mutahir. Another uh, proof on that is uh, the, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he himself alayhi salatu wa sallam and his sahaba radiyallahu anhum ardahum and the, wife, the wives of the Prophet ummahat al-mu'mineen radiyallahu anhunna wa, arba, wa ardahun. You know, obviously they didn't have, you know, showers and, you know, shower head and all of this luxury that we have now, right? That, that didn't exist at the time. How did, how did they used to make wudu or even ghusl? They used to use vessels or utensils and containers, right? You would put, put water in it and you, with a cup maybe or something, you're right, you would uh, use the, you do with the wudu or even the ghusl. You would put some, you know, utensil of water and then you would take from it and perform the ghusl. It is conceivable. Is it unreasonable to think that when you perform ghusl or when you perform wudu, and the utensil of water is basically just next to you, right? That this water would not splash and some of it go back into the utensil of the water that you're using for purification. It's very reasonable, right? You're taking a shower or ghusl, you're performing a ghusl and the utensil of water right there, you're taking from it and putting on yourself. It's gonna splash and some of it will go back into the very same utensil of water. And they would perform wudu and they would perform ghusl with it. So that's another obvious uh, evidence that it can be used, it is still uh, uh, you know, uh, pure and can be used for purification. Also, uh, there is another one last example or one last evidence. Uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm going you know, with so many evidences just to make sure that we know that this is the right thing to do. Like I said, a lot of people are so strict, stricter than necessary and that's not piety. It's not piety, it's not religiousness to Allah Azza wa Jal, right? Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us that this is uh, pure, can be used, no problem, right? And some people even accuse others. Oh, wait a minute, how are you using that water? Well, <laughs> the evidence is crystal clear. But in another uh, example or evidence is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, 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 was once, once walking in the uh, street. And he met Abu Huraira. And Abu Huraira was Juru. So after they sat down, he slowly left the, the, the place. 
And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, when, when Abu Huraira came back, he said, Oh Abu Huraira, where did you go? He said, well, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, I was, you know, I, you know, I was in a state of janaba, and I felt shy to sit in your company while in that state. So I went, performed ghusr and came back. So what did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, by Abu Huraira, he said, Inna al -mu'mina, he said, Subhanallah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Subhanallah, Inna al -mu'mina la yanjas, la yanjas. He said, Subhanallah, the believer never becomes impure. So even if he, if he or she is in a state of janaba, or she is in the uh, period, right? A lot of people think that the body itself becomes impure. You say, no, that's not the case. The Muslim itself, the body of the Muslim is not impure, never becomes impure, right? Obviously, he or she cannot perform salat, that they cannot touch the Quran, for example. You know, she likewise, during her period, she cannot do all of this. They are forbidden from doing that, but that doesn't mean that the body itself is impure. The body of the mu'min is always pure. Nothing makes it in, nothing makes it impure. So with that said, you know, it is obvious that even that when the water comes in contact with the body of the Muslim, that doesn't make it, that doesn't make that water impure. Even if you are performing a ghusl from janaba or from otherwise, you know, the ghusl, al-hadath al-akbar, the purification from al-hadath al-akbar, uh, that doesn't make that water impure. Any questions about that? Sure. I thought you would. <laughs> so, like, as I know, like, there is also a hadith, like, when you do wudu, um, the droplets can fall off from your hands or in your body, and your sins are forgiven. So yes. those are basically your sins or something like that. So, uh, like, is, isn't that water impure like that? Well, it's going off and it's removing your sin. This is what, what this hadith is saying is that the wudu is an act of worship, much like the salah, much like the siyam, and all the types of worship, right? They have the effect when accepted, when done correctly and accepted, right? You get rewards from Allah Azza wa And that also they erase certain some, you know, sins as part of that. And there are multiple hadith where Rasulullah for example, said, for the sins committed in between as long as the major sins are are avoided uh, Ramadan ila Ramadan Jumu'ah ila Jumu'ah etc you know Siyam uh, Siyam uh, you know Yawm uh, Arafah it, it erases the sin of the previous year and the following year etc there are certain acts all the acts of worship in general they you get rewarded for them as well as, as, well as they erase the sins right Wudu itself also is a ibadah that actually cleans your body from the sins. But does that mean that that water is carrying your sins and becoming impure of them? That's not the meaning of the hadith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yani the ibadah, which is a wudu, you are purifying yourself. And we're going to be talking about the wudu, which is a purification from the inside, from all the sins, before it is a purification from the outside. So when you actually, when the Muslim comes to make ablution and wudu, he or she is basically remembering Allah Azza wa Jal and purifying themselves from all types of filth and sins and mistakes, right? But that doesn't mean the water itself physically is becoming impure. Yani it is a visualization by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that as you are sincere and as you are mindful of Allah Azza wa Jal while doing that ibadah of al-wudu, the water as it goes down as if it is taking your sins with it. That doesn't make that water impure. And we've given a lot of example, a lot of evidences where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that it is pure. Like the shaking of the hand. Like the hadith of the shaking of the hand. Mm -hmm. Of how when you sit salam to your brother and shake his hands. Right. So like the, the, the sins are shaken off. Yeah, yeah. So it's a visualization, not the water physically becoming impure. Is it clear? Uh, yeah, it's clear. Are there any evidences like other than Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, like whom like did the wudu and others used their water and uh, did the wudu or you know, 
Like, like I said, um, all the companions, the wives of the Prophet وسلم, used to use utensils and vessels to perform either ablution or to perform al -ghusr. And like we said, obviously it's going to splash back into that. That's, that's the only way at the time, that's the way to perform this, right? They, like I said, they didn't have shower or head or anything. That's how everybody at the time performed this, right? How do, how do you perform ghusl? You basically use a utensil, you pour water in it, right? And then you go in, you know, where you cannot be seen, and you perform al ghusl. It's gonna splash back into that. That water coming from your ghusl, from your body, some of it will splash back into that utensil. So it is pure and can be used for purification. I think part, part of this question is, uh, did anybody else ever do that other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yes, I like I said, the companions. I mean, did anybody else make the do for others? Oh, oh, right. oh, oh, from, from, oh, seeking exactly. specifically the water? No, 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 no. Okay. That tabarruk is only specific to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we're using it to prove that that water is pure. But to actually think also that you're getting the blessing of the water of the wudu of a particular person, that's forbidden. That's only specific to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood your question. Yes. Yeah. It is pure, but we're not seeking the blessing of that water. That water isn't no, is, is no different. It's just water. No different than any other water. There is nothing, no blessing in it. Even, you know, if it is a scholar or anybody, there is nothing special. Or that that may be the question. If someone performed wudu, no. that water can another person take that water and make wudu? Yes, water? that's what we're saying. Yes, absolutely. It is pure without and can be used as a means. Without the intention of uh, seeking the blessing. Yes. yes, no, no, that's a different topic. It's not permissible. But to reuse the water, and uh, you know, believe me, that comes handy in certain cases. Yakhwan, yani, let's, let's, yani, it's not inconceivable that some of you may be traveling. Right? And you're going through very rural area, right? And all of a sudden, there, there, is no, there are no houses. The next town is maybe, I don't know, 50, 75 miles away. There is just no water. You run out of water. Or you're, you're almost running out of water. And now you need to make wudu and all the family needs to pray. What do you do? You just have a limited amount of water. Tell me, what do you do? Right? We're saying you can use that water and collect it in another utensil and then reuse it and another member of the family can reuse it. That's permissible, alhamdulillah. Clear? Uh, I just wanted to add, maybe it's a very clear evidence. Uh, there's something I remember just now. So in the, uh, for the evil eye, hmm. you know, there was a hadith where one of the sahabi fell down and he got a nazar from another sahabi. So Rasulullah called the other Sahabi and he said, make wudu from it. And the water that came out of that wudu, that was actually put on the other Sahabi who was sick. And uh, you know, that is also an evidence yes. that we can reuse it. Yes, yes. So Alhamdulillah, the result, the summary is that it is pure as long as none of the characteristics change. It is pure and can be used as a means of purification. Alhamdulillah. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal made the religion easy for us. One last thing is for some brother. Like, I hope like the water from the mouth, we strip the water from the mouth by doing cardboard. That cannot be used, I guess, right? But mother. Oh, you mean like. Uh, yeah, like we do the gargling. Yeah. While doing the wudu. And I, I hope we, we can use the. Well, the saliva of the, of the, of the person is not yeah, impure. Yeah, that's true. Yes, it's not impure. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't make that water impure. <clears throat> yes. As a matter of fact, this is going to be the next topic. The next topic is this. <clears throat> um, water that was drunk from. That actually very res resembles very much your question. Let's say, for example, you have a uh, utensil of water, right? A bottle of water or a kettle of water or any utensil container of water. And a person drank from it didn't drink it all, drank from it, and there's still water remaining from that, right? So obviously it got mixed a little bit with the saliva of that person, etc. Right. Is that remaining water now is still pure, can be used as a means of purification, right? And the same thing applies if an animal, right, drank from a mass of water, or you know, from the utensil, actually, 
and then there is remaining water. So can, is that water still you know, pure and can be used for purification or not, right? We say that you know, the remaining of the water that a human person drank from it, whether a Muslim or non-Muslim, whether male or female, and whether that male or female are in a state of janaba or the female is in a state of, for example, you know, either nafas after delivery or in her period, right? Impure in her period, right? We say that water, the remaining of that water is still pure and can be used as a means of purification. <coughs> can be used as a means of purification. The, re the uh, uh, proof on that is what has been authentically narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the hadith that we just narrated a little earlier. Al-Mu'min la yanjas. Yani, and this is in Sahih Muslim that uh, the mu'min never becomes impure. So just merely drinking from the water doesn't make that water impure. Because he, he himself or she herself is not impure and does not make that water impure. Also from Aisha, Umm al-Mu'mineen radiallahu anha wa radaha, she narrated that she used while in her period, right? And this is in Sahih Muslim. While in her period, she would drink from the utensil of water and then afterward, or immediately after that, Rasulullah would seek the exact spot where she put her mouth and put his, his mouth والسلام, and drink from that particular spot. While, while she is in her period. So that tells us that still pure, no problem. And you know, if he can drink from it, then it is a pure water that can be used as a means of purification. And then we say that there is a consensus of the scholars that uh, you know it is pure that the uh, um, water that remains a after an animal uh, who whose meat we can eat it is halal to eat the meat of that animal if they drink from the water then the remaining of that water is pure and can be used as a means of purification and there is a consensus on that among the scholars right and the reason I mentioned the Dalil as a, as a consensus, some people ask, well, where's the Dalil from the book or from the Sunnah? Remember early on when we first started this topic, we said there are four sources of evidence. There is the Quran, there is Sahih al-Sunnah, there is al-Ijma, a consensus of the scholars, and there is al-Qiyas, comparison. You compare one matter to another matter that has a ruling in the Sharia, right? And you compare the reasoning. If they, it has, if they have the same reasoning, then that matter takes the same ruling as the matter that has a specific ruling in the Sharia. So here we say that the consensus of all the scholars or all of the a'imma that the water that remains from in the utensil, that an animal whose meat we can eat, is halal to eat, uh, drank from it, what remains is still pure and can be used as a, as a means of purification. Even we say further that even if that animal is a wild animal or if it is a donkey or you know, any other type of animal, then what is the correct opinion is that that water is still pure and can be used as a purification, uh, especially if the water is like a big quantity, right? But if it is a small quantity and one of the characteristics change, then it cannot be used, it is impure. For example, let's say a lion came and drank from the utensil, example, and it is a little quantity and one of the characteristics change, then we say that water is impure. If it is a large quantity and none of the characteristics change, then we say that remaining water is still pure and can be used as a purification. And we use the same evidence that we used before where Rasulullah said, if the water is too qulla or more, 321 liters or more, and none of its characteristics change, then nothing makes it impure. But, and, uh, and this is when actually he was asked about if an animal came into it and drank from it. That, that hadith actually, he said as a reply to a person who asked about if, the, if an, a, you know, a wild animal came and drank from it, he said it doesn't carry impurity. Also, uh, you know, he was asked about the cat, for example. You know, a cat comes and drinks from the water. The remaining water, he said, 
إنما هي من الطوافين عليكم والطوافات related by Imam Ahmed and Abi Dawood and Al-Tirmidhi he alayhi salatu wasalam said it is not unclean speaking about the cat it is not unclean but is one of those who intermingle with you right cat is very uh, domestic uh, animal so it can actually it, it intermingle with us and whatever it drinks from remains pure and can be used as a way of purification and this is actually makes perfect sense because even especially back home you know and back in the days it is almost impossible to actually be very careful and make sure that no no cat or you know no other animal would not drink from the water you know they didn't have you know <laughs> buildings as we do now and you know pipes and everything it's almost impossible to make sure right so allah azza wa jal doesn't put too much um, hardship on us in the religion. The only exception to that is the dog and the swine. Big. We say that what remains from the water that was drunk from by a dog is impure. The reason uh, or the evidence on that is what Rasulullah said in this hadith sahih related by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim from hadith Abi Hurairah. He said طهور إناء أحدكم إذا ولغ فيه الكلب أن يغسله سبع مرات أولهن بالتراب يعني the purification of the utensil belonging to any one of you after it is licked by a dog by the way that uh, translation is not correct ولغ doesn't mean it's licked but it drank from the water with its tongue all the animals especially the dog and on similar how do they drink through their tongue right they grab a little bit of, of water and then they drink so it's basically saying after it drank from, it, it was drunk from by a dog, lies in washing it seven times, the utensil, washing it seven times, using scent for the first time to wash it. So if there is a dog that uh, drank from a utensil, from the water, uh, from a utensil in, a, in which there is water, then we have to clean that utensil seven times. The first one is by sand, and then the rest by water, or, you know, soap, whatever. So it makes it uh, unclean. Likewise, the swine, right, uh, because of its you know, impurity and because of its actually, uh, uh, you know, the terrible smell that, you know, even if you, if you look at the swine, at, you know, the place where it lives, it's so smelly and so dirty. SubhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَإِنَّهُ رِجْسِ يعني, Say, I do not find within that which was revealed to me forbidden to one to one who would eat it unless it be a, a dead animal or blood spilled out or the flesh of swine for indeed it is impure so obviously the uh, the swine is impure and uh, if it drinks from a water then it cannot it, it is impure anymore it cannot be used as a means of purification one last topic on this or one last thought on this topic you know just as a general rule general rule now we've talked about the different uh, you know cases and different you know what if impure substances get into it or pure substances get into it we say what if you cannot determine if that water is pure in or impure you just cannot whether because you know uh, you, you know just looking at the water you're unable to tell right there is nobody to ask is this water clean is this not clean you just cannot tell what do you do we say the principal rule, al-asl, right? The basic and principal rule of with respect to the water that it is pure unless you can prove otherwise. And this is from the taysir of Allah Azza wa Yani al-asl, in the water, is it, it is pure. Unless you can prove otherwise. If you can prove that it is impure, then it is impure. Otherwise, it, it remains on its original purity. Water is pure, unless you can prove otherwise, you can see it, you can, you can prove it, you can tell that it is impure. And this is, alhamdulillah, from the taysir of Allah Azza wa A lot of people make it harder, again, a lot of people make it much harder than it need be on themselves, and they think that they are, you know, this is pious, you know, piety and religiousness or whatever it is, but it is not. Allah Azza wa made it easy and didn't, he didn't want hardship on us in the religion. Any questions on this topic of water and the different uh, scenarios and cases? I hope the usul no. uh, makes 
have to like pray in Salah, right? You don't need to make wudu again, or, or intention of wudu. Well, you have to make intention of ghusl. Yes. And the ghusl itself is a purification that allows you to make salah. Yes. It's a substitute of wudu. You don't need, you know, some people think that they have to make ghusl and then wudu. No. Ghusl in itself, as a matter of fact, we're going to be talking about the ghusl. Part of the ghusl is actually wudu, but change just a little bit at the end. But it is wudu, it makes you in a state that you can, yani you become tahir to pray, to uh, read Quran, etc. We don't need to make intention for wudu while doing ghusl. Ghusl, just for ghusl. Any other questions? How much more time do we have? Five minutes. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to go into the next topic. Uh, of containers and utensils, inshallah, we will resume next Saturday. Or oh, actually, I'm sorry, next Saturday I'll be out of town. So, inshallah, I'll send in a reminder that it is canceled. We will resume the Islam then the following Saturday. Inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana wa zidna ilma. Allahumma faqihna fi al-deen fa inna hu man yuridi allahu bihi khayran yufaqihu fi al-deen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizukna atiba'ah. وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله